This is the Now Morning Show. I want to say hi and welcome to our brand new camera operator, yeah. Nicholas <laughs> Garcia. He's behind the camera. We got a shot of him. We always get our guys because it's a team effort to make this show what it is for you this morning. Always. We're talking about Carnival and the study of Carnival. Carrion, who do you have with you? I no have stranger. Christian Joseph with me, who is no stranger to the set as all and no stranger to this show. And uh, now you're here in a different capacity. And uh, that cap capacity is as the program coordinator of the Academy of Arts, Letters, Culture, and Public Affairs of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. And we're going to speak about the study of carnival. Yes, definitely. So tell us, really, what is the study of carnival? I mean, when I think about carnival, I only think about having a good time. Right. <laughs> but there's, there's work behind it as well. <laughs> exactly. Um, and you know, one of the things about carnival that is... I suppose somewhat elusive is the fact that so much of our carnival is more than having a good time. Right. And, and I mean, the history of it, how it came to be, and some of what we sometimes feel is lacking in our carnival is because there's a lack of understanding of what it actually is, where it right. came from, why it is. Right. So we at the Academy offer this Master of Arts program in Carnival Studies, which seeks to address some of those issues. So why should people consider, you know, following, pursuing this program and, and studying Carnival? Okay. Um, I think the primary reason, from my perspective, and you'll get different perspectives, but I think is understanding ourselves. I feel that our, our program professor, Professor Liverpool, actually has a calypso called Carnival is the Answer. And in so many of our social and economic issues or problems, I feel the solutions lie within us understanding ourselves better. And Carnival is one of the most crucial ways for us to do that. Carnival is a space where Trinidadians have brought all sorts of different influences into that space. And if we understand that space, we understand ourselves better. Let's touch, just touch. I know it's a, it's a deep history and, you know, with, uh, there's a breadth of information there. Mm -hmm. Let's just touch a little bit, you know, just to educate some of the people. Where did Carnival come from? Uh, not a simple question. <laughs> <laughs> so Carnival came out of one of the primary places is an, Af an African experience. So that coming out, there's a masking tradition that exists in West Africa. And that masking tradition found itself in Trinidad. So that a lot of, I, I, I like to look especially now at this Black Lives Matter movement. We had a webinar on Friday past in which we discussed the carnival and resistance. And really, that is the history of carnival, is recognizing that we in this space have an opportunity to put up a resistance, to show that the things that you say to us, this is what you have to be, this is where you have to go, this is what you have to do, is not necessarily so. So that I think very often the whole question of the French influence comes up. And of course, there is that influence because, like I said before, everybody that came to this space put something into a carnival. That's right. Um, but really, one of the things that, that came that is more important for what the French influence is, not really so much the balls, which we tend to look at, but really coming out of those balls was more that the carnival got put into that time so that carnival is not so much about us trying to be like the Europeans, but more of us saying to the Europeans, we are coming into this space and doing what we do in that space. Right. Yeah. So it, it's, it's about resistance, yes, and but also about identity. Identity and expression. And, you know, there's so much more we could touch on when it comes to the history of it, but we'll save that for the program itself. So tell us a little more about the career path of Carnival Studies. Great. Um, carnival Studies 
what I like to see when we when we think of the career part of carnival studies, obviously there are people who would want to be involved in mass making, and of course people who want to work in policy making, and uh, creatives. But what I also look at is that no matter what sphere you want to be involved in, especially when you get to the master's level, and this is a master's program, when we get to the master's level, there's a certain self-awareness that comes with studying carnival that will permeate whatever you are doing. You want to be a teacher, you want to be a banker, you want to get involved, of course, in policy, or you want to be an author, a historian, you want to be a cultural activist, you really need to understand Trinidad and Tobago's Carnival. Certainly. And, uh, you know, adding to that, you know, what, what career opportunities are out there, you know, when you are a graduate of this program, if you go, go forward and get your master's in the Carnival Studies program? So, um, I think one of our, one of our favorite um, success stories is, is actually a regional one. One of our graduates came to us from Grenada and returned to Grenada to be the head of Spice Mass. Wow. So that understanding, you know, the, the study of Carnival gives one an opportunity to really get involved in, in um, Carnival at a, at a managerial level. Right. Also, people go into teaching, and of course, quite a few, quite a lot, I would say, not even quite a few, quite a lot of our graduates go on to, to, to do their PhDs, so that it also creates an opportunity to further your, your academic career. All right. Does it also include um, any studies of the business of Carnival? Absolutely. Uh, Within the last, I would say, three years or so, three or four years, we introduced courses that definitely look at the business of Carnival. Uh, very often, we find that people don't understand, I would say, some of the things like copyright. Right. Copyright and understand what your copyright is and how you, how you take advantage of it. You don't understand what management means, especially if you're managing an artist. Or so that... Yeah, we definitely do cover management as part of the of the of the um, program. It's a really holistic approach to carnival studies, yes. from the history and the birth of it to the identity of Trinbagonians with carnival, yes. and, and then into the business of into carnival policy, as well. into policy, into business. As well. in, yeah, definitely. Fantastic. And um, you know, on, on this Saturday, we are inviting folks to come to a a webinar, more of a meeting in, in, a, in a virtual space where we're going to have our instructors introduce to anyone who's interested. This is what Carnival Studies is. Right. Tell us your questions. We want to answer you. We want to encourage you to come into the program. Wonderful. So that is this Saturday. This Saturday. And how do persons get more information and, and register for that webinar? So we're doing the webinar on the Zoom platform. Uh, you can, of course, send an email because I don't know if people would necessarily remember the meeting ID. Uh, so just send an email to the academy at utt.edu.tt. The academy at utt.edu.tt. Correct. Uh, just ask about the webinar and whether you can be uh, invited in. And of course, we will send you the meeting ID. So you just get up Saturday, 10.30 a.m., join the webinar. Come talk to Professor Liverpool, right. Dr. Otley, Dr. Francis, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Those are our, our, our lead instructors in the program. Uh, of course, we'll have a couple of our graduates discussing what the program is like for them, what advantages they've, they've gotten out of it, and why they are saying to you, this is something you should also consider doing. Right, you know, and, and see how it has enriched their lives. Definitely. You know, definitely. And, you know, that is... I'm so glad you used that word, enrich. <laughs> but no, honestly, carnival studies, understanding who we are is so enriching. And yeah, and, and further to that, you know, enriching us as you know who we are, as we identify as Trinbagonians, 
and of course education on the whole Definitely. enriches. And with that, I want to thank you so much, Kristen Joseph, who is the program coordinator of the Academy of Arts and Culture and Letters of the University yes. of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you for us. having me. And again, you can reach out. Uh, that webinar is on Saturday. You can reach out um, via the email address given earlier and uh, request your spot, and you know you could find out more about that. All right, so I've been chatting with Kristen Joseph, and we are now going to take a break and come back with much more. Stay with us.